every human being, their body has many layers of soul within it. The mystics went through great pains to describe the various layers of soul. Today, I wish to discuss the layer of soul that many of the mystics called the animal spirit. But I will call, for the purposes of the Western modern lexicon, the bodily consciousness of the human being. The bodily consciousness of the human being is a frequency, a vibration that is impressed upon the very form, the very DNA of your body. It's part of being a living organism and it is encoded with an evolutionary mandate and code. It's designed to ensure that the body finds sustenance, that the body finds security, that the body propagates its species, that the body flees from threat or challenges threat, fight or flight. It is part of a benevolent process in order to secure the propagation of the species. I want you to think for a moment of a large corporation. And the corporation has many departments. It has the boardroom where the CEO is. It has research and development where the scientists are being innovative and on the cutting edge of new technologies and new ideas that are not for today but are for a long time in the future. It has a marketing and sales department that are designed to go distribute its wares, its production of what's being created now. It has its production department that is creating the product that's happening right now. And it has customer service. The customer service is individuals that after going through a series of automated choices to divert people from staying on the phone, that if they press the buttons enough time and go to enough departments, they'll get hold of an individual that will answer their query from another country that's far away, and they'll be able to talk about their problem. And the corporation, in that regard, in that way, is able to try to appease the customer and deal with their problem. I want you to think for a second of what would happen if you took the individual who's in customer service and you put them in research and development. I want you to think for a moment what would happen. How much product would be developed for the future? The entire research and development department would transform overnight into a series of emergency situations that have to do with right now for the most obscure reasons and purposes and directives for the most obscure people and the most obscure concerns. And now I want you to say, you're doing such a good job, Mr. Customer Service Person from Research and Development. I am putting you in the boardroom of the corporation. And now you're the CEO. What do you think is going to happen? Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to close down the whole Research and Development Department. Because it's all... High in the sky, it's not real, there's nothing here. It's a complete waste of time. It's a complete waste of resources. Instead, we should double down on customer service. All the funds that were research and development put into customer service. In fact, we have to slow down production because 
too much is being produced and we're getting too many calls in customer service. So we'll double customer service, we'll slow down what we're producing. And as far as the marketing and the sales, we're going to do such a good job in customer service that the word's going to get around. We don't even need it. <laughs> I want you to think for a moment, how long is this corporation going to stay solvent? How long will it take before the corporation implodes upon itself? This is the human being. There's a system within the human form. It's designed to make sure you know when to go to the washroom, you know when to eat, you know when to find comfort and security and a place to rest. And you know how to propagate your species so that you continue to exist in one form or another. But we have individuals that only experience this level of their spirit. And so as far as propagating their species, 95% of their day, they are focused on how am I going to continue to propagate? And they don't know why. And you have other individuals that are so paralyzed in their life that they say, when am I going to get my next meal? It is... I just finished breakfast, is it time for brunch? Because I am in customer service. And you know what? In customer service, it's always an emergency. I never get a call in customer service that says, Hi, how are you doing? You're doing a really nice job. I really like the way you are serving people. No, every time I pick up the phone, there's something wrong, someone has a problem. Some individuals are so buried and paralyzed by all the problems in customer service, they can't move at all. They can't leave the house, they can't get out of bed. And so we need to use a particular word it's called compartmentalize. We need to divide our psychic energy, our mental resources, and allocate it where it belongs. We need a CEO. We need someone in the boardroom to designate what our priorities are, how we can get the most out of each department, and where each thing belongs. the bodily consciousness does a wonderful job sustaining its species and that's all it must do it does not belong in the abstract mind it does not belong in the higher soul it does not belong making plans for the future And it does not belong in settling grievances of the past. It simply belongs in its duty in maintenance, in making sure the individual eats, making sure the individual sleeps, making sure the individual exercises, has security, and the individual propagates its species. And that's it! So let me let you in on a secret. The human being is a very, very dynamic creation. The human being is able to tap into divinity and the creator's light in ways that much of creation is unable to. In fact, some of creation It's so, so far from the Creator, because the Creator is connected to all. And some of creation, they're not in service to all at all. They are very much in service to self. And because they are so stagnant in their service to self, 
the light of the Creator, direct light, is too overwhelming, it's too strong for them. They feel they will get lost in it. They feel it will be like an ocean of water and they are just a drop. And they will lose their individuality and they will lose their essential selves. So they fear the Creator's direct light and they stay far away from it. But if they go too long without the light, then they get depleted and they cannot exist. For they also come from the Creator and they need to reattach themselves one way or another. Well, let me tell you how clever this a these agencies are. Very clever. There is only one creation in all of creation that can take the Creator's light of connectivity to all and convert it into a baser stream. The human being. The human being is the only creation that could take jet fuel and convert it into diesel. The mystics call it spilling the light to the other side. The human being is the only creature in all of creation that can do this. Maybe you'll start to feel where I'm going with this. So you have all these divergent streams of energy and you can call them whatever you want. They could be angelic, whatever you want. It's not relevant. What's relevant is you have an agenda of many parts, all in service to self. Who need the light of creation but cannot access it. Not because it's not available to them, but because they believe the Creator works as they do. Selfishly, in service to self. And they believe if they were the Creator, they would obliterate everyone. So they do not trust the light. And they have one unique creature in all of creation that has the ability do exactly what they need to tap into that light and transform it to a base or form. What do they do? Well, let's focus for a moment how the human being managed to convert that light into a base or form. Through fear. Through feelings of abandonment. Through feelings of seduction, of not trusting the greater process of nature, through feelings of dominion or victimhood, all these reinforce a polarity, one set up against the other, and they take the Creator's light of oneness and they convert it through a lens of polarities. So it takes the light that is on a very, very high frequency and vibration, and it converts it into something that is a bit more stagnant, a bit more thick, a bit more immovable, a bit more rigid. And so you have agencies, and in various spiritual traditions, they call these agencies all different kinds of names. And it's not relevant for here. What, who they are, what they are. They're negative energy. And it's your job to help teach them how to be positive, and not to be governed or ruled by them, and not to allow them to parasitically coax you into allowing the customer service department to take over the boardroom. Those human beings are very fickle. But how do they do this? Well, the first way they do this is by getting you to exile your inner child, the innocence. How do they do that? They remind you of the first time you were disappointed and betrayed 
and the first time you hurt, so that you bury your inner child deep, deep down inside. Why? Because the inner child is necessary for you to renew. If you can renew, then it's not one long day, but each day is new and fresh and rejuvenated. I want to explain to you how this mechanism works. With your inner child, it is like you are a electronics that has a rechargeable battery. You plug it in each night and you're recharged in the morning. Without your inner child, you are with Duracells that will last two days and then go flat. Why do they want you on Duracells? Because when you are flat, then you are apt to feel survivalist. You are apt to feel like you are under attack for your very existence. With you are apt to remember how you were hurt and feel like every situation is a threat to your existence. Someone cut you off online. That's not a disagreement. That's territorial. That's fight or flight. And I'm choosing to fight. Everything comes a perception of a threat to my very existence. If you spoke to one of the greatest gangsters in Chicago or New York and you asked them, why do you do what you do? Prey upon the innocence. They will say, what are you talking about? I'm trying to survive. I need to feed my family. This is survival. But you're living in a $10 million estate. How could you tell me you're surviving? If I wasn't surviving, I wouldn't have a $10 million estate. I'm always under threat. I need to feed my family. I need to be loyal to my family. In fact, you will not find a single criminal unless he has dementia. You will not find a single criminal that cannot justify his actions through the verb of survival. Because customer service is in the border. So what you have to do is you have to stop being passive about it. You need to recognize that my native self, my innate self, my true self, my heart and my soul are benevolent, are future-oriented. It's not all urgent. I invest in my future I can't just survive, I have to be productive and I have to govern all my faculties from a space of equilibrium. And be inspired by life each day. And when you're in that space, you will recognize that Some energy serves you, and some energy just does not serve you. And when you recognize the pockets of energy that do not serve you, you will begin to realize and recognize that, and that energy is not part of you. It is foreign to you. And it is something that you made a compromise, some kind of attachment to. You tried to borrow on its energy, and you made a compromise because you did not trust nature and you did not trust creation and you felt under threat and you wanted an advantage and you made that bond so there is a link and there is something that's parasitically trying to get you to convert your light of benevolence into light of service for self so what do you do now 
you convene with your inner child, the one that is in persistent renewal and wonder, and you ask your inner child, what can we teach? What can we impart to what we have attracted? Because any conduit and connection that is made to your soul is a two-way conduit. To the degree that they can impress a truth and a resonance and a music and a vibration upon your soul is the degree that you can be proactive and impress it upon them. So are you going to choose to be passive and a victim? Or are you going to choose to be sovereign and benevolent? You ask your inner child, your inner child will say, we appreciate freedom and sovereignty and wonder. And so, there is no jurisdiction for anything to convene upon your soul and your body and your form unless it has a lesson of truth to impart to you. Often the lesson of truth is there to show you the void that you've created. Which part of the creator did you not recognize? Which part of truth did you not have reverence for? And so in that space you recognize what you've picked up and you say, thank you. I get it. I recognize the fault line. I recognize what I have been avoiding and I choose to embrace it with wonder. And you are free from your bond now because you fulfilled your contract. You've taught me the truth. And I will teach you the truth of sovereignty and freedom of co-creating with the rest of all, of service to all, in harmony with the rest of creation. That's my gift to you. Now, now the customer service department can return back into customer service. And I can continue to develop for the future. And I can continue to be productive. And I can continue to be wise in the boardroom and broad-minded and keep harmony and balance between all my faculties and capabilities and energy and grow the way I was intended, the way I was designed.